Hey everybody, this is Nathan doing the installation video. You'll notice Minecraft is not up right now, and uh, that's for a good reason. This is the installation video. We can't exactly have Minecraft running at the same time if we're trying to get Minecraft. So I'm going to run you through this. Uh, see, I wanted. To, currently, I'm using Dropbox to host the mod pack and allow for updates so that we can send these files and the updates of the files between one another. Now, um, a friend of mine told me about AT Launcher. I'm going to bring that over. That's this thing. Uh, it's not exactly in place, but whatever. So, this, this thing, this is the form that I have to fill out to be, to host my mod pack on their launcher. The problem with this is I need to have a website and you have to whitelist process and I'm not sure how to do this. I am I know a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, I do not know jQuery and so I'm not entirely sure how to create, I do know how to create a website but I don't know how to create a website that's then available that's on a server somewhere that anyone can access at any time. I'm not entirely sure how to do that. Um, how to upload my website to a server would be that what that means. Now, I could do something on the Minecraft forum, have that be the website, and that way everyone could get to that. But I'm not sure how to do the whitelist process then, because I'm guessing this means that if you want to use my mod pack that's on the AT launcher, then you have to be allowed in by pushing a button somewhere. And the button would have to be on that website, the Minecraft forum website. You click that button and then somehow, through coding magic, it adds your name. You go, you go to a different website that asks for the name and then it adds that name to a spreadsheet that then allows you through here onto my mod pack. And if I'm, if I'm not correct there, uh, then let me know. And I would like to get this up and running as soon as possible so that we don't have to use Dropbox anymore because uh, the Dropbox is a little personal, I'll say, because you actually need to contact me and then we share this folder that has Minecraft in it. And it, it, I'm not available all of the time. I try to be, but I try to check my email every day at least. So... That could be a little problematic. So I'm gonna go with the Dropbox version right now, and this is mainly for my friends and other people who know me who wanna try the mod pack before I've figured out AT Launcher. Or this is also so that people can tell me, what are you talking about? AT Launcher is so simple. They just do this, this, and this, and everything works. That would be great. Please tell me that in the comments section or an email if you know me, email or Facebook if you know me. Um, that would be great if you could tell me how to do this AT Launcher thing. I have read about it. I've done the About section. I've been in the Home section. I've been about the Forum section. I've in the Packs section. And I am not sure there isn't really a description of this. So I'm just going off what I think this means. If I could figure this out and that it's not all that difficult, then yeah, I'll definitely go ahead and put this on there. Put my mod pack on there and that would make everything easier. So if you're not interested in the Dropbox method, you don't have to watch the rest of this. But for those who do, and I know a few, there's at least two of you out there who, who do want to do the Dropbox thing before I'm done with AT Launcher, uh, this part's for you. So here we go. This is my Dropbox. So basically, there's this folder here, Minecraft Portable, and in it, there's updates. So you can read this text file, and this tells you what I did. And there's a version list here. So after I have this live, and people actually ask me about doing this, because right now this is currently just for me and my girlfriend. So I make sure she updates and whenever she doesn't, I can actually go in there and do it for her. But after this point, I'll be keeping all of the text documents for each update and they'll be titled that update. So you can keep up with what's going on. So you have server Minecraft 
And the way this is set up is so that Minecraft runs from this folder. Ish. Everything Minecraft needs is right here. It's in these folders and over here. I got some Minecraft commands if you want to put some common commands in there. And Java arguments, we'll get to that later. That is a personal thing. I might remove that. We'll see. Uh, so the main things here are bin and data. Don't worry about that. That's just, I use always sync, the program always sync to keep Dropbox updated quite easily because if I go ahead and delete everything that's on Dropbox in this folder and then re-upload the new version, it's going to take like a day to re-sync to all of your computers and that's just not okay. <laughs> that is just not okay. So I use always sync to only s single out the files that have been changed and bring those over and delete the old ones. So Minecraft portable folder, you'd share this with me and then you'd sync it. You'd set it up to sync to your computer, which would then be in your Dropbox folder. It'd be right here, Minecraft portable. And there's also the Forge server if you want to use that. So you'd go in here and there's the updates. There's sort of Minecraft, see it's just like what's on Dropbox, but it's actually usable on your computer. Though, if you're gonna just run Minecraft, if you're gonna go double click this and run it, do not do that from Dropbox. You need to first, the first step is take this, right click, copy, and then go ahead and just paste. Oh, I already have one. Never mind. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you do that. You just paste it onto your desktop or somewhere else on your computer. So then you have a separate version than what's on Dropbox. Because if you run the one that's on Dropbox, and then say one of my friends runs one that's on Dropbox, then they're, you're both running it at the same time. Now think about that. You're using files that are in here. So you've... You're, Minecraft is messing with files in here. It's messing with them. It's, it's updating them so that you can play, you know? It's changing them, changing settings, changing controls, uh, moving around. That's it, really. And that changes the files that are in here. They'll be updating to the Dropbox folder online. And then the other person is doing exactly the same thing. So you've got two different versions of a whole bunch of files all trying to be uploaded to the same place at once and this happened early on with Victoria and I and it just I had to delete the Minecraft portable folder off of Dropbox and off of both of our computers and re-upload it so please save everyone the trouble do not just run from Dropbox okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy that to somewhere else on your computer and that's where you're gonna do the rest of this from I'm gonna keep going with the Dropbox folder just because this is what you're gonna have because my my folder looks like that it's a little different we've got some different stuff in here we've got a stuff folder we've got a stuff folder yeah that's because it's stuff that I'm not really sure how to use just yet and we've got other stuff so mine's complicated and it's gonna look different than yours I this this folder just to show you and this is an important fact. Mine is, let's see, I think it's somewhere like 2.5 or 3 gigs. Yeah, 3.8 gigs of data in my installation on my computer. But Dropbox has, it's really a stickler for size. So I've kept this one down to two. So you'll need two gigs of free space to run this on, to have this on your Dropbox, to share this folder on your Dropbox which is helpful for most, seeing as I only start out with one gig. It's craziness. I really wish I could do this on SkyDrive, but SkyDrive won't let you sync folders that aren't yours. So you go in here, you read the updates. Well, I guess you don't need to if this is your first time. If it's your first time, you just go in here and you'll have all this here. What you need to do to get Minecraft running, get my mod pack running, is first go into bin, right click minecraft go to properties sorry the properties buttons off the screen there uh, so you click properties and go over to i think it's compatibility yeah compatibility then change settings for all users run program as administrator 
don't know if this is too low. There we go. I hit apply and okay. Okay. Now Minecraft will run. Uh, now that it's set as administrator, double click MC Portable. Click yes. It's going to load up. Loading up. Alrighty. We get your normal Minecraft launcher. Hooray! Now, at this point, you need to already have gone on the Mojang website or the Minecraft website and purchased Minecraft for the $25. Otherwise, no, you're kind of stuck. Uh, because it'll ask you for your password, your email and password. But you see, I was the last one who ran this on this computer, so it didn't ask me. But it will definitely ask you. It'll recognize it's on a different machine than it is now. And it will ask you for an email address and password. So the main thing here first, after you put in your email address and password, go to edit profile. Back from editing. Okay, so now that we have this edit profile up, the first thing you wanna touch is this. Because chances are, this is not where your Minecraft folder is. So what you're going to have to do is find your .minecraft folder. So if we go back, so if we go back to the folder here, the server Minecraft folder that you got from Dropbox and copied onto your desktop, you then go into data and .minecraft. Okay, this is the folder that Minecraft runs from. So you go up here to the address bar, right click, copy. Okay. And the important bit about this is that Minecraft needs to know where it wants to run from. Otherwise, it's just going to run from app data. And that could be problematic if you already have a Minecraft installation with another mod pack and you don't want this one to get in the way. This way, this is isolated. It's isolated to a specific spot on your computer. So you take that, the game directory, make sure that's checked. Game directory is checked. Highlight that and control V because you can't right click this box. I'm trying to right click right now. You can't right click this box. So you have to use control V to put that in there. Uh, make sure the version says 1.6.4 and the last numbers are 9, 6, and 5. That's really important. Uh, and now the Java arguments. This is important and it's going to be different for everybody. A few bits of it are going to be different from everybody. Uh, mostly just the numbers of what you're worried about. All the rest of these words, those are important bits for getting shaders to work with Optifine and also for getting Mysticraft to run in an optimal environment rather than having it lag out and crash. We had that happen a few times where the world would sink. The world would shrink around you in a circle until you had one chunk. You existed in this one chunk and that was your whole world. And then it disappeared and the game crashed. All this junk over here, that prevents that. Yeah. So, and if you wanted, you can find that on the Mistercraft website. All the stuff from max perm size over, that's from the Mistercraft website. All right, so back to the meaning of this. This right here, this first number, is basically the maximum amount of RAM you want to give Minecraft. I have 16 gigs of RAM in my machine. So I have seven, seven gigs here. The first, because this means megabytes. This M means megabytes. And if you know, one gig is a thousand meg. So 7,150 is seven gigs and 150 megabytes. That's basically all you have to deal with is this first number. So think about how much RAM you have. If you don't know how much RAM you have, you can hit the start button. Sorry, it's not, it's down away from the capture field, but you can hit the start button and go to control panel and make sure that's still in the capture field. Yes, it is. We can go down to system and that will tell you how much RAM you have. And six, six gigs would be ideal as a minimum but I've seen it run on things like four gigs it'll run on four gigs without the resource pack of course six gigs is the minimum for running the resource pack at least six gigs of RAM in your machine not dedicated six gigs of RAM to Minecraft that's crazy 
Now, that's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> this is for the upscale version of the resource pack. This is the 128 by 128 resource pack. That needs the 7 and the 6 here. So I'm dedicating anywhere from 6 gigs of RAM. This XMX, the second XMX here, I'm dedicating anywhere from 6 gigs of RAM to 7 gigs of RAM. So if you have, say, 6 gigs of RAM, you should change this to 4 and this to 5. That's what Victoria uses because she has 6 gigs of RAM. And this perm size. This perm size is important because I have 125 mods. This is basically designating how much space on your computer are you going to let these mods use in order to operate. If you don't give enough, you're going to have lag issues, world loading issues, and your Minecraft is not going to run smoothly at all. You can have lots of crashes as well. Now you can also have a little telltale sign if you don't have perm size big enough. If you fly up to above the cloud line and then come back down and you've immediately lost textures, your perm size is not big enough. As in like Steve's arm's gone. Yeah, your perm size is not big enough. Uh, so I usually set this anywhere from one to five, but I have lots of gigs of RAM, so you'll want to set this anywhere from like just get rid of that. So you're only doing half a gig to one, to one gig. So that means that you'll be using anywhere from four to five gigs of RAM, and you'll have this to use your last gig of RAM if needed. So it's definitely, if you only have six, gig, six gigs of RAM and you're running on a laptop, and it's not a gaming laptop, then you should only be running Minecraft if you're running Minecraft. If you're gonna run Minecraft, only run Minecraft. Nothing else. <laughs> Don't have like the internet open and stuff. We have smartphones now. Can Google stuff through your smartphone. So yeah. Once you've got that all set up with the numbers you want, I'm going to change these numbers back to what I want. I'm going to change that to a 2. And that's going to be 5. Yeah. So remember, if you had 6 gigs of RAM, this would be a 4. And then this would be a 5. Okay? And then this would be a zero, and this would be a one. And I explained the math behind that, so we're good. You want to hit save profile, and then you're all good. You can go ahead and hit play. It will go ahead and set up and stuff. It's going to be editing this folder now, this Dropbox, uh, not the Dropbox. See, I'm running in Dropbox. I'm doing what you're not supposed to be doing. I'm pretty much the only one who can run from Dropbox and it'd be safe. Because if you try and run from Dropbox, it's not going to be good. So this, I set up those textures in the background. This is from pure BD craft this is their little logo thing and that's because I do use a lot of pure BD craft textures go ahead and minimize that and now it's gone and that's because the Minecraft thing is not responding until I don't know if I can bring this over my RAM usage needs to go up it's what it's doing right now is it's using the CPU to take the textures from the resource pack that are on the hard drive and write them to the RAM. So you'll see RAM will be going up. And once your RAM gets up to the appropriate level, for me, because I'm running the full resource pack, the full 128 resource pack, this is going to have to get up to somewhere around 40%, 50%. I've, I've had it hit 60 sometimes. Yeah. And that could take a while. Duff. All right, so you'll see I say 124 mods loaded. But hey, Nathan, you said this was a 125 mod pack. Well, that's because of shaders. 
Uh, I currently do not have shaders in the mod pack of the Dropbox version because, well, I don't know anybody yet who's as a computer strong enough to run shaders and my mod pack. Not even mine can do it. So I simply removed it. It wasn't worth it for everyone else to have to keep going into the mods folder and removing shaders every single time they update. It was just too annoying. I left it out. So you can go ahead and hit single player. And there'll be a few worlds here, maybe. Um, I might remove them. But just to, as a proof of concept, we'll go and resize the screen so that it fills. Proof of concept, you know I'm not lying. We'll go and load up. And here we are. Oh, it's the server world. It's the server world. Craziness. Oh man, we got loud sounds. We gotta fix that sound, yo. Alrighty, so. Oh, there's a new version of Railcraft available. Cool. So, a little thing I'd like to talk about is this these phantom pipes. This seems to happen whenever server, whenever the shaders isn't installed. However, for some reason, it's only on my computer. I mean, Victoria's computer doesn't have shaders installed, and this isn't happening. So, I think it might have something to do with uh, Mysticraft. Those, remember the Java arguments section? Uh, how I had that whole long bit about Mysticraft? Victoria doesn't have that in her line, in her Java arguments list. And she doesn't have this problem, so I think it might have something to do with that. So if you do want, if you do use Mysticraft and you want it to run optimally, it's not needed per se, um, but it does help. Those lines do help, and you can have shaders in your mod in your mods folder and not have it running. It's fine. It does reduce your frame rate a little bit, but if your computer is good enough, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter at all. It doesn't matter online, is what I'll say. I can keep shaders in my mods folder and not use it, and everything's fine. And these pipes are all there when shaders is installed. So yeah, that's how to get this thing running. So yeah. Uh, we will have another video that I will go over what to happen with using the task manager. Task manager will become your new best friend with the troubleshooting video. If you followed this, you'll have installed Minecraft somewhere on your computer and you'll be able to run it. You'll just double click MC Portable and it will run. So next, and we'll maybe skip to here, we're gonna talk about the Forge server. So, here we go, Dropbox. If you want the Forge server, that requires another half a gig in your Dropbox in order to sync the Forge server. So you'll download this and you'll again, you'll copy it and put it on, you'll paste it to your desktop. And you just go in here this is server world. If you want to run your world instead of mine, all you have to do is delete this, copy your world in instead, copy your save file in, so delete this and paste your world. And there's two ways you can either make it work. You can either rename your world server world this same way with the capital and the space. Or you can go down here to the properties, the server properties file. And I have Notepad++, so I'm going to open it up with that. But I think it should work with normal Notepad. You can open this up. And what you'll change is this. Change this to be the name of your folder, your save folder. Whatever you copied in instead of server world, you'll put it there. 
all this stuff, this is stuff that there's plenty of other resources out there to figure out what all this does. So I'm not going to go through that right now. So you just do that and you would hit save. I can't hit save because I didn't change anything. But you'll hit save. And then close it. And then also if your computer is not like 16 gig RAM computer, what you do is you the run modded server. This is just like MC Portable in the client version. It runs the it runs Minecraft. But it tells it how to run. So you're going to edit this. And you remember these? Perm size, max perm size. So this is again up to you and how much you want to give. I'm giving it four gigs for uh, normal stash and then the perm size for the mods being 0.5 to 1. Because the server does not need as much RAM, not nearly as much RAM as your client does. And that's mainly because the server doesn't need to render anything. If the server, the server doesn't need to render anything. Rendering takes a lot of RAM because it has to hold all of the images for every single block in the game in your RAM. If you just want to run the unmodded server, you'll run this and you'll edit it, of course, to have your proper stuff that you want. You don't need perm size or max perm size because it's just normal Minecraft. But you have no mods that need a space to work in. So that's simple like that. And that will run this. So that's what basically these do. You can run the modded server by just double clicking this, but there won't be enough RAM for it to run. And you can run the Minecraft server without any mods by just double clicking this. And that will run just fine. Or you can use this if you want to give it more RAM so it can be a little faster. So yeah. That's about all there is to this. Um, as far as updating, but basically all you'll do is you'll take your Dropbox folder and you'll bring it to one side and you'll nope we don't want to bring that up you'll bring up your minecraft folder that you have on your computer and by reading the updates text file that's on dropbox you'll know what things to go from dropbox you'll go into dot minecraft you'll take Say I updated the resource pack. You'll take the resource pack, you'll copy it. This is the Dropbox version. Say Dropbox. Take the Dropbox version resource pack and bring that over to the same place on yours. Delete yours. So you just right click and hit delete. I'm not going to do that because I have a lot more in there. I have a lot in there. Uh, and then you just right click and paste. So that takes the resource pack that I uploaded into the Dropbox folder and puts it into your Minecraft installation. So hence updating. You do the same with the mods or the config folder, basically whatever I told you to do in the text file. Okay? Yeah, and if you missed a few updates and there isn't really anything important, any critical stuff, then just resource pack, config, and mods. Those are your common things that will be updated. And that won't change your controls, it won't change really anything about your computer, how it runs, or how Minecraft runs. Uh, we have had a little bit of problem, and that is uh, the NIE key bindings. The NIE key bindings will get messed up. I'm not sure how to fix that, that's probably a config thing. Um, let's figure, out, figure about that later. So, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope it's all good and made sense. If it's not all good and doesn't all make sense, then uh, let me know in the comments and stuff. And, well, bye. Thanks for watching.